We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Today's program is sponsored by the generous support of our patrons. Your support helps to further our historic preservation efforts. For more information, visit patreon.com forward slash 1834 Restoration House. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House, where we are restoring our circa 1900 Victorian house. The brick planters that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks are finished now, so we're going to go in with a brush and a hose and scrub them thoroughly. The sounds you're hearing in the background are cicadas, and they're all over the south and the midwest. And what we're seeing here is a cicada that's actually dying. They don't live very long, and they make their noise, they mate, and then they lay down and do this. So this one is just about gone. This area back here is the water drainage system, the water catchment, and it goes downhill and drains water away. Now, it's never been cleaned since we started this project because it was originally buried under about a foot of soil. So we were able to unearth it and we vacuumed it up a little bit, but it's never really been thoroughly cleaned. So I've got my water and I've got my brush on a handle and I'm just gonna start right here. Just get everything wet. Try to rinse down as much as I can. Wow, that is really dirty. Okay, then I'm gonna come back with my brush and scrub it really good. I want all that mud, dirt, debris, all of that out. I'm even doing the foundation wall. Now, a foundation wall is going to require some repointing of the mortar, and that simply means fixing the joints here because some of these joints, I don't know if you can see them from that far away, but some of them have uh, eroded over time, and so we need to restore those joints and make them weather tight. That's incredibly dirty. I keep turning it on. <laughs> Sounds looking good. It's full on summer here, and it was getting a little bit too hot over there for my taste. So I decided to come over here and work in the shade for a bit. These are the bricks that we patched in in the last episode, and I think they turned out really good. And hopefully the other bricks will look just as nice when they're clean. The west end over here is in even worse shape than the east side was. It never really got any kind of cleaning, and it's just absolutely disgusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, just spray off as much as I can with this, just to kind of get it going. Yeah, I'm just seeing mud, a lot of mud. Okay, now let's get the scrub brush in here and see if we can't loosen up some of that. Oh yeah, that's just dirty. This is years and years of neglect that caused this kind of stuff. Whoa. I can't believe how much mud is coming off of those bricks. That is incredible.
Well, here it is all cleaned out. It's not perfect, and I think we'll have to go back and scrub it really good one more time. But we got a lot of dirt out of here. Here's the catch basin. So all of that water and dirt came down into here. Now you can see where the catch basin enters right here, but the catch basin goes several inches deeper. So I'm putting my hand click down to the bottom. Probably about six inches deeper than this. The idea there is that any dirt and debris will fall to the bottom, but the water will continue to pass through. If you've ever seen the drains on your street, down inside there, you can't see it, but there's a catch basin at the bottom of that, exactly like this. And they have to go and clean those out every now and then. But that keeps a lot of debris out of the sewer system. Here you can see a lot of that debris. This is stuff that we flush down there. So once this dries out in a day or two, I'll come back here and clean it out again. It's later in the afternoon and we came back over to this side here. And it looks like we may have a thunderstorm here shortly, so I'm going to work as quickly as I can. But this part we did early this morning, this looks great. It's absolutely fantastic and it's mostly dry. It takes a long time for things to dry out here because of the high humidity. So this is where I stopped and I'll pick up here. I just noticed the cicada that was wiggling its legs earlier today is now dead and crispy. So uh, I guess that's one less bug that we have to listen to. So let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to start by pushing all the debris out as much as possible and try to flush some of the dirt. Well, things don't always go smoothly around here. You see this water is flowing, but it's flowing the wrong direction. It's supposed to be going that way towards the porch and out back. But for some reason, either this section here has sunk or that section up there has risen and it's no longer draining properly. The other side over there on the west end works great. This one doesn't. And I'm not sure how invasive we have to get with this to make it work right. Worst case scenario, we'd have to break out some bricks, regrade, and then lay the bricks back in again. And that may be what it takes, maybe. This is the west side that we did earlier today. It's looking really good. And it's gonna require a little bit more scrubbing here and there, but it's so much better than it was earlier. But the most important thing is that it drains properly. When you put water in here, it goes and it's gone. There may be a couple of spots here and there with a little bit of standing water, but for the most part, it drains just like it should. Now that this is all clean and dry, I can see a few of the problem areas. For one, there's a big gap here between the catchment and the foundation wall. And it had been mortared at one time, but it appears that either there was some extra mortar that was added later and it fell out or something may have shifted. In 120 years, anything's possible. So we'll get that all cleaned out and we'll remortar that and make it tight, just like this part is right up against the wall here. Here's a view looking down into the catch basin. This morning it was completely full of mud and water and it's partially drained out. The reason that it's not completely drained out is that the pipe which comes out of here just runs into soil in the yard and it really has no place to go but it'll eventually just ooze out of there and disappear well for the longest time our crepe myrtles were not blooming and now look at them i don't know what happened but it's fantastic they look so beautiful This one was particularly stubborn. It took a long time before it started blooming, but it sure looks beautiful now, doesn't it? We're out here in the cool of the morning today to clean the brick wall. When I was building this thing, I ended up smearing mortar on the face of the bricks, and that's normal, that happens, it, you can't avoid it. But what masons will do is after the job is done, they'll come back with a solution of water and muriatic acid and a brush and scrub that all off. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is wash the wall down and that gets rid of the dirt, but it also soaks the bricks because we don't want the solution soaking in. We want it to stay on the surface and do the work. Even after Mike just got them all wet, these bricks soak up a lot of water. So if I stop for a moment, within seconds you can see some of the bricks are drying out already. It really absorbs a lot. So you gotta really soak them well in order to keep that muriatic acid from soaking in. It's time to mix up the acid solution. So I have a plastic bucket, not a metal bucket, and I have one gallon of clean water. Now, if you remember from science class, they said, always wear gloves. They're kind of with cuffs on them, or better yet. But the biggest takeaway is, never pour water into acid. Always pour the acid slowly into the water and that keeps it from splashing. Safety glasses. This is a 12 ounce glass jar full of muriatic acid. Don't use a metal container and don't use a plastic container, but glass is always the best for this. Once we get it diluted into water, then it'll be safe in the plastic bucket. So I'm going to very slowly pour this in right down the middle. Take this stuff seriously, because it'll burn your eyes, it'll burn your skin. This is a natural bristle brush, and I'm going to dip it in the water, and then I'm going to scrub. What I want to be very careful of is that I don't do this, because the acid will run down my arm, and we don't want that. I have to make sure that my hand is downhill all the time. One moment, then. Let me give you some cuffs. <laughs> oh. Little safety measure. Safety measure, all right. I feel better. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So I'll dip it in. Brush it off. And I'm gonna let that sit on there for a bit. And I'll start the next section. What this does is it reacts with the lime that's in the mortar and it dissolves it.
five minutes, so I'm rinsing it all off. I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that if you soak it with acid and then scrub it with another piece of brick, that that could potentially get it off there. So let's see what happens here. I've got a piece of brick with a nice handle on it. Showing potential. Oh, hey, hey, look at that. Let me just get on there and scrub a little more. That's really interesting. That was really caked on there too, but it seems like between the acid and the scrubbing of the brick, that knocked it right off. So let's see if I can get the rest of that brick cleaned off. This part here, right here, is really heavily soiled. And it's actually built up somewhat. Seems to take a couple passes. But it's definitely getting that off of there. I'm really surprised at how well that works. Just about, just about done here. This is working really well. Wow. I'm so glad we figured this out. <laughs> Live and learn, we're getting there. This really should have been done within the first 24 to 48 hours of laying the brick. We just didn't have a chance to get back to it. But it's looking really good. big mess this was right here on the corner with mortar smears and crusty stuff all over it was just pretty nasty but between the brick 
and muriatic acid water solution, I was able to get that mostly cleaned off, and I think it looks a whole lot better. So now the sun's coming out. It's getting hot over here on this side. So we're going to flip over to the other side of the house and clean that one. The brickwork on this side of the house is significantly better than what we did on the other side. We got better and smarter. You'll notice that instead of having globs of mortar on the face of the brick, we only have more like a film. And that's kind of what you would expect to see on a normal, well, well done brick job. <laughs> so I'm going to come down here now and clean that off. A lot of you asked about this downspout here and the fact that it would blow water right towards the brick planters. And yes, that is a problem. And what we plan to do about it is to take this and then turn it this way and head it in the direction that it needs to go. But we don't have that pipe right now. And the other end of this is fairly well blocked. So what I'm gonna do as a temporary measure is take this thing off of here and put a tube in its place, and then we'll route the water over here. New plan. Take this extra piece off, put this back on, because whoever put the black pipe on there originally damaged the end. We don't want to damage this end because we want to get the proper pieces. So we'll put this on here and then we'll put the black pipe on to go over the bed. It's coming slowly. There we go. All right. It's at a funny angle. There we go. Now we can see if we can get that pipe on there. And on that way. There we go. Can you try that? Wait, wait. It's not jammed. Okay. That's good. On. Yeah, so, but it won't stay on. No, but you want to screw, put some screws in there? I don't know if I've got enough meat there to, uh, to bite on. Like right in there or right in here? Mm. 
there's already a hole there, so let's see if I can do that. Okay. Let's see if I can get it to go in there. For those of you watching at home, this is really a terrible solution. Yes, it is. <laughs> but uh, we just need to divert the water away from here until we can get this other part rebuilt. Um, and we didn't come up with this. Somebody else did. This was already here. Yeah. And it just doesn't really fit. But we'll make it work for now. Next time it rains, the water will come down and shoot out here. And that'll be a temporary solution until we get the drain system fixed. But that's a big project, and we're not ready to start that yet. That entails rebuilding a whole section of porch here and opening that all back up, and that's some pretty major construction. And I'm afraid that's a project for another day. So for now, we'll just go with this. It's time for the big reveal. We start over here, and we head around the curve. I put this thing on to divert the water temporarily until we can get back over there and fix the porch. This is the eastern planter here. And then across the porch is the western planter, which is basically the same, with one exception. Whereas the other one is curved, this one here is on a 45 degree angle and that just mimics the porch because over there the porch was curved, over here it's on a 45. Come over here, the planter ends, it continues on as just a diversion wall, diverts the water here into the catch basin and shoots right out here and that's the entire water system. So, thanks for following along on this incredible brickwork journey. It ended up being a lot longer and a lot more involved than we expected it to be. The whole thing started out just to pull some plants out of the ground and pop some new ones in. Well, that still hasn't happened yet, but we do have a nice water system and a new planter. In next week's episode, we'll backfill this area here and then put the remaining soil into the planters. And then we're free to plant whatever we want. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Well, thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. If you like what you see, please subscribe and leave a comment. We love hearing from everyone.